Well, good evening and welcome to this week's edition of In the Pocket with the legend himself in Peter Spider Everett and Spide. Here's your week, B, mate, uh, in the world of Spider Everett. I tell you what, it's, it's frustrating at the moment because I'm on the Gold Coast and every football ground is shut. We had no footy last weekend. Mate. This weekend we're getting more. It's just so, the grounds are just saturated. I went to just a local rugby union club the other day. We do some pie nights up here. And, uh, you know, the old traditional fantastic pie nights. Oh, they, didn't ha- they don't have them in Queensland. You know, when you normally get like uh, you know, mate, 10 kids at training, yeah. oh, get 10 kids at training in June, you have a pie night, you've got 60 there. I don't know where they come from, but <laughs> so we do these pie nights and they're training in bare feet so they don't rip up the, the turf. It's just horrendous at the moment. Again, this weekend, we don't know. So, you know what? It's actually starting to get a bit. Bit annoying, bit depressing. You just like you can't find ground. You can't do any training. You can only go to the beach and do training and yeah. tackling drills so many times. It's there's no undercover. You can't get us, you know, a, an indoor basketball center. You get nothing. So you know what? I'm actually coming to Melbourne this weekend for good weather. I can't wait. It's going <laughs> to be awesome, and I've packed jam packed the weekend of footy. So we can't wait for it. Do you know what? On the flip side, we've been there. Our weather down here's been unbelievable. We've had one of the most mildest, beautiful summers. Uh, we had a couple of uh, days of bad weather a couple of weeks ago. But other than that, Spide, uh, in the land of Vic, mate, God's country down here, it has been absolutely hey, magnificent. You guys have had, uh, and look, these are rough stats. Don't quote me. But you say you guys have had 200 mils of rain this year. We've had 1,600 mils. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's, look, it is. And you've had something like 100 Days of sun, we've had 28. What are they called? What is On the it? Sunshine Coast. El Nino, is it? Is that what it is? El Nino? Oh, I don't know. There's El Nino and Nino and all these people. I don't even know who they are. But all that I got out of a weather person today, he said, when he said, at the moment, the sun is sneezing and the Gold Coast is copping it. So I yeah. said, all right, that's an easier way to look at it. 100% copping it uh, big time. That is for sure. Hey, listen, what about last week's results, too, Spide? The, the one that we were both pretty keen on, I, I thought, was the Magpies defeating the Dockers. We were both there. Yeah. There was some nice value there. They do travel so well, the Collingwood Magpies, and, and they delivered in spades. And it just makes you wonder where the Dockers are actually at, doesn't it, Spide? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? You know, they, and you saw Adelaide have that really, you know, a little bit of purple patch. They were getting within the line. They had a couple of wins, yeah. and you're thinking, gee, they're the real deal. And now they've started to, you know, t- taper off. Same with, you know, Freo, they're up and about early. Teams can then slowly work them out. Yeah. So yeah, look, they were they were good early, and I'll tell you what, there was some really good money for them early as well. But now you got to start to look at it and say, okay, are they actually? And when you, yeah, you know, Collingwood do travel well, so it was always going to be a tough one. But you know, at the moment, you look at you know Carlton, Geelong, Bulldogs, and St Kilda. They they are all starting to look like a real deal. The yeah. Saints oh, yeah. getting over games. You know, Carlton will question, will they? You know. Big time for them to stand up and deliver. They were able to do it. And Geelong, they're, they're Port Adelaide. week in, week out, the Blues now, aren't they? You know, like every Absolutely. week challenge and they're getting it done. I think it's worthwhile. You know, I, I still love doing that, you know, putting a couple of sides in there for that top four because, you know, the Blues are still paying good money and somebody's got to fill up those pace, uh, places. You know, Brisbane didn't look convincing, even though we know, you know, yeah, uh, Hawthorne do really well in Tasmania, but yeah. um, you know, and then you've got Geelong who got over Port Adelaide, so you kind of got the four teams that you start to say, you know what, we've got to start respecting them, and then you got four teams that have just, you know, Port Adelaide, Adelaide, Fremantle, and the Bombers. You know, you just yeah. got to sit there and go, yeah, you know, unless they're at home, they're going to get a cheeky win here or there, and then you've got the Collingwood, you know, the Pies. And the Giants, the Giants are still a bit of an unknown. New coach, Hurdy in the in the back back um, yeah, you know, stalls take, of the. What was your take on that spot? I look, I I understand why they did it, and I reckon it was a good idea. I know they've got assistant coaches, but you know you still got James Hurd. You know French James Hurd, one of the greatest right. players. You know he's been in the coaches' box. He knows what he's doing. Yes. Mark McVeigh hasn't been. Yeah. You know he's he hasn't had that experience. So. For me, absolutely, I didn't mind what they did, and the team responded. So, look, there's a lot of changes, a lot of different, uh, you know, strategies. So, you know, Collingwood and the Giants is definitely still up in the air. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, look, it's it's just interesting to see how the whole season's playing at the moment. I have to ask you the question, Spide. I, I've I've become a little bit frustrated with the rule changes and stuff. And you know, you kind of let things slip and you let things slide and all that kind of stuff. But I, I must admit, it is becoming a little bit harder each and every week, isn't it, to watch because there's just so much inconsistency with some of these new rules. Look, I I, I think you know certain rules played a great role. The six 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 is fantastic. I okay? love it. You can't yep. you can't back yeah you, know, you yep. can't you know yeah you can't absolutely load up your defense. You know when there's 30 seconds to go and there's two points in it, you yep. are absolutely a, a, a solid man chance. Man. Yep. Man on man. The the one you know manning the mark, I think that's that's got its merit. I think there's a you know a semi tick there. I, I I do like it. I reckon there could be a little open, bit of leniency. The game up a little bit, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. And you know the kicking in allowing you know don't have the 15 meter um, from the fullback kick in. The one that gets me is the umpires' feedback, and I know we need umpires in our game. Mm. I, un- I totally believe that every junior club or every local club should have two parents that go and do an umpiring course so that we've got umpires. You know, there's parents and dads out there and mums that would love to do it. Try and encourage the kids through that system because, you know what, I like, you know, if you, you, you're naturally going to de- demonstrate if there's a free kick against you. And if you're giving a little bit of feedback, as long as you're not going overboard, that's yeah. a part of the passion of the game. I don't want to lose that. I got fined plenty of times for giving the umpires a little bit of feedback. Now, I probably yeah, went a little bit too far, but you're chucking your arms up and going, you're kidding. Aren't you? You're like, you demonstrate, you're like, passion. show him on the scoreboard. It's a passion. Yeah. That's what you do. We're humans. We're, we are, we're yeah. in a battle that, you know, we're, there's emotions that are high. How are you supposed to just sit there, shut up? No, you can't. You, it's not a part of our game. And, and to give away 50 metres and then 100 and then this and that, and it's downfield, it's just so frustrating. I really enjoy it when the umpires turn around and say, mate, I'm not going to change my mind up. Yeah. Get on with the game. Get on with it. That's or, right. I've know, never seen that part change their mind, Spy. That's right. Just get on with it and talk to it, communicate, all that kind yeah. of stuff. The problem with it is, Spy, is that each each interpretation is different, isn't it, from each umpire, each individual. Oh, and you know what? And when you, you know that through different umpires, Razor Ray can take a fair bit of feedback. You know, you can give him a bit of curry and you go, oh, yeah. yeah, whatever, keep moving. You know, I get walking down the street. Where another person, absolutely not. So... Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I think it is a very frustrating. I was just talking to somebody today that's saying exactly the same. You know, they've had to really kind of, you know, gone off it a little bit, which is disappointing because, you know, we love our game. We all do. You know, you're never going to lose it, but it's something that, yeah. you know, it's just a part and parcel of our game. It's been around. I, I agree if you're going absolutely bonkers, but, you know, you look at some of that vision of the 80s and 90s, and there's some, like, oh, imagine mate. Mark Jacko now. BT, all the boys going off, giving them, yeah, no, I, 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 just frustrating. Anyway, that's our beef for the week. But, Spide, I want to talk about the Melbourne Football Club. Now, a couple of weeks ago, the, the boys down at Palmer Bet, I, I just, I must admit, and we spoke about this at length, a dollar ninety the Demons to finish on top of yeah. the ladder. Now in to a dollar forty five to be the minor premiers. We finally said, they've listened to us. Well, we said a couple of weeks ago that is giving <laughs> away money, and they're two games clear now with the Lions losing to Hawthorne last week, and they are just humming. They're purring along beautifully, well, aren't they, the Demons? Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of, you know, we always thought this this purple patch, you know, Melbourne versus uh, Fremantle three, yeah, you know, three weeks ago was going to be an absolute cracker. Yeah, this week you sit there and go, oh, you know what? Because you know they've been able to just get get over the line on their sides. Yep. And the other one, the hard thing at the moment is, is they're probably giving them a little bit too much credit. You know, Melbourne winning by 40, 50 points, but they reckon they're going to be winning by 70 or 80 points. It doesn't happen that often these days in AFL. So, yeah, look, they are just going along nicely. The top four is the interesting one. There's no doubt about that. We've spoken about that a little bit earlier. The top four, and then we're going to finally get to a, a top eight. But, uh, yeah, Melbourne, like... Gee, dollar forty-five. It's like back in Winks. You'd take Winks at a dollar forty-five, wouldn't you, every day of the week? So why no, wouldn't you take Melbourne? They're just as just as good. I reckon, to be honest, I reckon the price has gone there because a dollar ninety was an absolute luxury from the boys at Palmer. But I reckon someone's lost their gig over that uh, price they put up because that was crazy stuff. What about the Tigers, mate? Um, they are surging at the moment. They've got a big couple of weeks coming up. So they've got Sydney this week. I cannot believe they're the outsider. Then they take on the power at the MCG. Uh, then they got the Carlton Football Club again for the second time this year, possibly – Probably should have beaten the Blues, I reckon, in round one. They just had a bit of a lapse there for 10 minutes, and then the game was over. And then they come up against the Cats, who we've had a pretty good well, record against. 
is there any coincidence that it started to all come together when Dusty came back? Yeah. Oh, in the faith what? of Dusty. I'm going to say it was a little couple of weeks before that, to be honest. Yeah, but he started, he was at training. The belief yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he turned Boys up. Spark he, up he, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you see Dusty Martin rock into the change rooms and you go, you know what? He's going to be back in two weeks. Yeah, yeah and he's around the, the football club. Stairs, absolutely. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a gun. He's a jet. People love him. So, look, there's there's no coincidence that, you know, suddenly they find a little bit of a little bit of form and then that self-belief kicks in and they know how to how to play football. They've been in that situation. So, Suddenly, your, your, your two tools are, are thereabouts, but your small forwards are the ones at the moment, just being able to keep it alive and, you know, the midfield at the moment. Like they're just all playing their role, which they've been able to do for three or four years. And, you know, you've got to sit there and go, you know, they're on top of their game for a long time. You think about Sydney and all these teams, uh, you know, after a grand final or two grand finals, yeah, they, the the first six weeks they're only just getting into yeah. you know their their fitness and their rhythm because yeah you know, they started six weeks later than everyone else. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, mate. Now listen, what about Brownlow Watch? Uh, of course, uh, Lockie Nielsen. It's pretty open at the moment. Yeah. The Brownlow, he's at four bucks. All thanks to the boys at Palmer Bet. Paddy Cripps at four bucks as well. Christian Petrarca is at five dollars fifty, and Clayton Oliver at six bucks. Obviously, the feeling around those two boys they're going to drag votes off each other. I reckon the track. I reckon he's the value, mate, because he kicks yeah. the goals, stands out a little bit more than Clayton Oliver. I'll what give you somebody who's. St- I'll give you somebody who stands out just a fraction more than him. And there's they could take some votes off each other. They are starting to win a lot of games as well. Yes. You know, look at the Western Bulldogs. You know Norton's going to kick goals with a headband. You know, he stands out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when you've got the best mullet in the business, and it has been the best mullet for some time, Bailey Smith, he's got to absolutely get some votes. He's getting 30-plus yeah. every week and clearances and on the outside and running. Like, he is just a machine at the moment so what, going what inside. What Bailey Smith, mate? 23s. 23 bucks at Palmer Bet. That is huge. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I, You know, he's he's got to be seen. He's, yeah. he's a jet. He's I think he's in the top four or five um, uh, possession getters for the year. Yeah. So he's yeah. around the footy each and every time. And you, you're looking good. The paper's up and about. I I reckon that, and the others are, are all good bets. But when you want a little bit of value as well, and yeah. somebody who at the moment is getting a lot of the footy, he's an absolute, uh, certainly have a couple of bucks on for sure. Yeah, right. I like it, mate. I like your thought process. Let's move along to this weekend's round of matches, Spied, round number 11. I can't believe we're at round 11 already. And I just uh, preempted before, Sydney Swans taking on the Tigers. This is the SCG Friday night footy. And I reckon this is going to be a bit of a blockbuster spy. The Swans are at $1.65. Tigers at $2.25. The Swans at the line minus $8.5, $1.90. The Tigers plus $8.5, $1.90. To be honest, how the hell is there such a difference in the price, especially because the Tigers over the last five oh. or six years have had a pretty good record against the Swannies. And you're coming against a side that's had a couple of wins against a couple of losses. You sit there and go, yeah. how does how does that work? And, you know, I was looking at this just about an hour ago saying, you know, wet weather, okay, you've got Rewild, you know, you've got Franklin, but, you know, you, you're small forwards and, you know, Sydney you got some really good in and under players and so is um, Richmond. Now Kennedy's out. You sit there and go, well, hang on. Yeah, absolutely. Surely that's going to come towards Richmond's way. So for me, yeah, I reckon – I reckon the Tigers are every chance to challenge them there. Small, small ground, get it out of the middle there and uh, get it on the boot. Now, we know it's been putrid in Sydney all week. It's supposed to be fine on Friday. The ground soaks, you know, really does dry up well. So, for me, you know, Richmond's well. every opportunity. Tigers play well in the wet, mate. They, they've got a really good record the last four or five years in wet, slippery conditions because they play that, just push the ball forward at all costs kind of footy. Well, that you should game. get your cheer squad just to buy a couple of thousand water pistols. <laughs> and just you know, start spraying them if they're a couple of goals down. Ah, oh, love it, Spod. Right, so you're I'm on a the thinker. Tides. You're on the ticky train. I'm, I'm with I'm with the Tigers. If we can win this week, we're going to cause a little bit of grief come September. I reckon well, we're just building nicely. Last year, all you have to do is make the eight. That's it, exactly. Make the eight. Right, eight. Brisbane Lions taking on GWS Saturday afternoon at the Gabba. As you touched on, wet conditions, one forty-five. Lions at dollar nineteen. Giants four dollars eighty. At the line minus thirty-one and a half. The Lions at dollar ninety. Giants plus thirty-one and a half at dollar ninety. Uh, Giants were disappointing last week. Are they going to bounce back? The uh, coming up. Against no, the Lions. The Lions were, yeah, yeah. Lions were disappointing last week. They 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 let their 
you know, let it down to Hawthorne. But at the same time, you, you know, Hawthorne do play Tasmania really well. The Giants got over the line. They were only playing GWS. This will be a good challenge for them. And I think, you know, and we spoke about Mark McVeigh and uh, James Hurd, a few changes. So the hardest thing for Brisbane now is to know exactly how the Giants are going to play this game. Yeah. Because, you know, it's there's 10 new players, a little bit of a tweak in the game plan. Suddenly, players feel a bit more refreshed. A bit, it's a danger game for for the Lions. I reckon they're way too short. Um, you know, I'd be looking at the line. You reckon they're going to get over the? You know, I know I they've reckon, got. Some... I reckon they'll they'll bounce back at the Gabba, mate. Now they won't lose two in a row. They'll be disappointed with last week. I think they will be, but I don't know. I you know you just can't we say this every September. I just I don't I don't I don't have a lot of faith in. They, in they lack a couple. They lack two good guns. I reckon for mine. You know, they're going to need that? a lot of things to go. That's Brisbane. They just they need yeah. a lot of things to go right. You know, like I, I just reckon Danaher is going to have to play his optimum throughout that final series. And, um, you yeah, know, they keep Charlie Cameron quiet. Yeah. You know, suddenly, you know, if he's not getting the footy, yeah. Um, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're ways to goal and their avenue to goal can be sucked up pretty quickly. They will, so look, they, they will win this week, though, Spide. They're a lay right down, there, mate. They're a lay down. They're a lock. I'd be taking old. the Giants at the line. Right, eh? Right, eh? We might have a little side wager, me and you. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't you forget it either. <laughs> hey, listen. Big asterisks next to it now. <laughs> hey, uh, Saturday at GMHBA Stadium, uh, 145. Geelong taking on the Adelaide Crows. Going to be a big ask for the Crows. The only yep. thing I will say is that uh, history says they do actually perform well coming off the back of a defeat the week before when they travel to a space like Geelong and uh, Melbourne. So they're at uh, a big price there at six seventy. The cats are at a dollar eleven. Uh, at the line minus thirty eight and a half dollar ninety. Crows plus thirty eight and a half dollar ninety. What do you reckon? Cats Gee, get the job done. Well, how many more home games can they get the cats? I know. If they've had a lot of home games there this and year. I don't know. Saturday, who... Saturday Arvo, what's to go there? Because we you know they're taking away from country footy, mate. They're taking away from yeah. the hand and league spider. They're all heading down the highway to go and watch the cats <laughs> there, mate. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they've got so many uh Saturday afternoon games, especially at that stadium. But uh, yeah, look, I'll be looking at all the big forwards to kick multiple goals here. They got to yeah, yeah, Hawkins up there. It's just Cameron's so in good, good Nick, too, isn't he? He's yeah. going well. And it's just, you can put two plus, three plus goals, whatever you want on them, and, uh, you know, they'll kick them. They're just in really good form. And what I love about it is that, you know, when the Hawk gets it and he's on the boundary line, he just knows he's going to kick it. And you can just see the crowd up and about behind him. So, look, I love watching him play, but, um, you know, the Hawk there, absolutely. So, yeah, have Geelong, but have their big forwards kicking multiple goals. I reckon they'll get over Adelaide pretty easy. And no danger field for three or four weeks too, which is a big loss for the Cats. Hey, Melbourne taking on free at the MCG Saturday afternoon, 4.35. Uh, Demons $1.21. Dockers $4.50. At the line, the Demons minus 26.5, uh, $1.90. And plus 26.5 for the Dockers at $1.90 spied. Demons had a little couple of moments in the third quarter against the Kangaroos where you're thinking, hang on, this could be a massive upset. I think they were 21 bucks last year, uh, last week from memory, all thanks to Palmer Bet by the Kangas. But uh, yeah. they just responded like good sides do. Well, they did. The, yeah, the, the line was at 73 last weekend or something ridiculous like that. That's why I think at, at the line here at 26, absolutely. You know, Melbourne doll yeah. 11 or whatever they are, dollar 21, take them at the line. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll get Freo by 26 points. Yeah. Um, I think, as you said, they got a bit of a scare last weekend. But at the same time, Fremantle normally don't travel really that well. Uh, they've had a good year, but they are on the decline at the moment. They are starting to, you know, really, you know, yeah. So, look, Melbourne will just continue on. And, you know, why wasn't this game three weeks ago when Freo was absolutely on top of their <laughs> game? They were sitting one and two. That's what we were all hoping for. They were going to be in exactly the same boat. But, unfortunately, Fremantle has gone a little bit off. But can they respond? For young, for young kids, it's going to be really hard for them. So for me, Melbourne at the line, absolutely. Right, eh? West Coast take on the Western Bulldogs off the stadium Saturday night. I think uh, the AFL boys at the start of the season would have been thinking this was going to be an absolute belter on a Saturday evening, but uh, it's not to be. Eagles $7.50 head-to-head, Bulldogs $1.09. Uh, so the, the Bulldogs on the travel are shorter than the Demons at the MCG taking on the Dockers on the travel. I can't work that out, to be honest. Anyway, the line, the Eagles plus well, 40.5. Did, 
Sorry, you they go, played, mate. Played in the grand final there last year, so they know <laughs> how to play you know, off the stadium, not too bad. They do know how to play off the stadium very good. At the line, $1.90 plus 40.5 for the Eagles, minus 40.5 for the Bulldogs. What do you reckon? You thinking a blowout here, Spot, or, or what are you thinking here? Yeah, look, I still believe that West Coast is going to give something at some stage during the year. Yeah. I still believe they've got a lot more to give. I don't reckon they're playing anywhere near. And I know, you know there's been speculation about, oh, they should blow the team up and they need to get this and they need to get that and they need to rebuild. I don't believe that. I reckon they've still got enough quality players in there that they should be able to bring a few young blokes through and at least be very, very competitive. So I've actually been a bit disappointed and surprised with them this year. Yeah. I thought they would have been a little bit more competitive. But you are coming up against uh, the Western Bulldogs where we know Lukey Beveridge is is ruthless. He'll be just bad luck. This is a, this. We don't care who you are, where you are, when you are. We are here to play yeah. and we are going to knock you off. So for me... Absolutely. Take the Bulldogs. Look at Norton kicking goals. You've still got, uh, you know, the Bont. You've got, uh, you know, Bailey Smith. Gee, they've got a really good side. You know, the one I'm liking at the moment is Libertoro. He was out of that, not out of that side, but he's, you know, in the, uh, you know, deep in the back line and, uh, you know, not given much of a chance. Now he's just coming through the midfield. He's getting 20, 25 touches. Normally pops up, yeah, kicks a goal. He's, he's yeah. one. He's very consistent. He's one that I always put in my multis with an anytime goal scorer. So that's how I'd be looking at the Bulldogs this weekend. And Spide, Freer, uh, West Coast, I should say, have got a, a pretty potent four line. Like you got Liam Ryan, oh. um, Jack Darling, Kennedy, Willie Rioli in there. Like there's some dangerous players um, floating around. And if they get hold of you, you know, they can blow you apart pretty quick. So, you know, and that'll happen Big at some that. point. Yeah. No, Nick Nat Nui. That's, you know, yeah. and, you know, I don't want to bang on about how important a Ruckman is to a team. You're going to, mate. I know, I've, You're gonna. I, know I've, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, <laughs> but you know what? They're just they're worth their weight in gold. With, with no Nick Nat, you sit there and go, you know, big question marks, a, a question. We've seen that with St Kilda yeah. without their two big tools as well. Try Melbourne without Gorn. You know, it's, it's yeah. Well, sorry, it's just fact. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. No, 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 I'm with you, mate. And you've pumped up. Were you doing this show last year? Was this show part of it? Because Brody Grundy got that big, massive deal, a $7 million deal at the Pies, mate. So you've done well. The Ruckman stick. Absolutely. Crap. I only take 5% off him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Hey, uh, let's move along to uh, the other game on Saturday night. Gold Coast taking on the Hawthorne Fo- Football Club. TIO Stadium. Uh, head to head, the Suns a dollar seventy eight, Hawks two dollars oh five. One of the matches of the round for mine uh, at the line minus three point five a dollar ninety. The Suns plus three point five a dollar ninety for the Hawks. I, I'm really looking forward to this contest. I reckon it's going to be a beauty spot. Yeah, it will be. Uh, I reckon that um, you know the Suns are probably a fraction too short. I thought it would be pretty much a dollar ninety. Each yep. way, very really hard to pick. Hawthorne's a good travelling team. You know the Suns in those. You know, the dewy conditions, uh, why they play at night, I don't know. We've, we've argued that before because it just brings the quality of football down. Get it over and done within the afternoon. It might be a bit hot, but, you know, at least it's not dewy. But, you know, I, I love the game up there. Um, the Gold Coast Suns, uh, you know, They've, they've, they've fought on. They've had a crack. You know, they, they only just went down by the Western Bulldogs by 15 points at Mars Stadium. And you know, it's a long trip from the Gold Coast to be able to do that. Bulldogs are in good form. So, look, the Suns haven't been putrid over the last few weeks, either of Hawthorne. So, I'm with you. Match of the round. Who's going to win? Look, gee, it's hard. I, to be honest, you can flip a coin either way here. I don't know. I, I, I want to say the Gold Coast Suns, um, but I reckon they need more drive out of their midfield. They need to win their centre clearances and they need to win them convincingly. Where Hawthorne really do win them and shut you down and then get the ball forward. And they, they play four full quarters. The Suns normally lose about you know, 10 or 15 minutes where they'll get ran over and that's where they'll lose the game. If you do that with Hawthorne, they'll capitalise on that. So for me, you know, you know what? If I was if I put my hard earn on it, I'd be going the Hawks. Yeah, right. I reckon the Hawks. Yeah, I just, I just, yeah, I know it's a, it's a, it is a toss of the coin. This game for mine uh, could go. Yeah, in. it's it a cracker. Surprise me, it is a cracker. Hey, St Kilda taking on North Melbourne. This game Sunday at Marvel Stadium. Saints a dollar eighty six. Kangas nine dollars forty at the line. St Kilda minus forty six point five a dollar ninety. Kangas plus forty six point five a dollar ninety. Saints just getting the job done, mate. You're going well at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, big king kick six, six straight. So no, he, it just he's shows. Just... it in. He's just a big man, and they're kicking it to him. Oh. They, 
the foot skills and the way they use him and they just make him jump at the football, it's just sublime to watch. It's uh must be exciting oh, the way to you target like that. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to go down and watch it. But I think that uh, you're being a bit bit kind at a dollar oh nine. Um, you know, that's a bit bit skinny for me. As much as I love the Saints, and we know it's you know <laughs> North Melbourne who's had a tough year, but you know what, the line at forty six points. I don't think the Sun uh, the Saints have won by forty six points the whole year. So look, Marvel, yep. it does set them up. Um, you know, it's still with no Jack Steele, but you know the way, as you mentioned, like the way they deliver it to Kingy and just his set of hands on him. But he does have to kick the first one. If he misses the first couple, then suddenly this yeah. mind starts playing tricks on, and we see it in a lot of the forwards. So, the yep. yeah, look, I'd be, I'd be just loading up on possession getters and and goal kickers because dollar nine, bit short, but at the same time, the Saints, you know, they're playing at Marvel. They'll get the job done. It'll be a good game to watch, and uh, you know, it's just good to see them up and about and actually you know you're starting to get like Carlton you're starting to get that little bit of faith of saying you know what I'll go there this weekend because they will win yeah yeah I no, don't I want to say that yet but no, it's no, nearly but at the stage where we can go get a bit of confidence in them yep absolutely yeah good stuff mate hey listen Collingwood v Carlton this is going to be a beauty on Sunday at the MCG Sunday afternoon footy at its best head to head the Pies 318 Blues $1.36 uh, Pies at the line plus $18.5 $1.90 Blues minus $18.5 $1.90 this is like the old days I reckon they're going to yeah. get 80,000 oh. MCG this Sunday. It's going to be huge, Spide. It will be chockers. Ligon Street afterwards on Sunday <laughs> night will be absolutely jam-packed. There'll be cars tooting the horn with scarves out the windows and streamers and people yelling and screaming. That's what we love about this game. And, you know, get the old duffel coats out with, uh, you know, Grundy on the back or more. You know, you have Darcy Moore instead of Peter Moore. But, look, <laughs> it's just – it's set up. Honest, uh, I think it will be. Um, you know, Collingwood start to bounce back now. We saw a great win over the weekend. That little bit of faith now. Carlton, we, we're saying that you know they should win. Carlton should win. But you've always got that little bit in the back of your mind yeah. going. You know what? If Collingwood get jump them and get on top of them early, you never know. And we've seen what Collingwood can do. So this will be absolutely primed up. This is the the game of the round for me because not only the the eighty thousand strong crowd, but Two teams, people be going there. Carlton should win. Collingwood are going there, hoping they can win. And if they, you know, Collingwood kick a couple early and put that little bit of self doubt in the the minds of the Blues, you know, and the crowds up, you got forty odd thousand yelling and screaming. It's, it's just. Beautiful. This is what we love about footy, is that yeah, it Sunday is. afternoon. It's good to see some of the big power teams getting back up there too, that is for sure. Hey, final game, Port Adelaide taking on the Bombers. Uh, 440, Adelaide Oval. Uh, the power at dollar thirteen. Bombers $6.10. At the line, the power minus $34.5, $1.90. Bombers plus $34.5, $1.90. Any upset, Spide? I've got a feeling... No, I think Port... I've got a feeling this is, this is the game that I think if there was going to be an upset, it wouldn't surprise me if the Bombers did just kind of... Get close enough. Yeah. Yeah, look, they're every chance. If they play the, to the way they should be, and you know, you get Dylan Shields and all these blokes playing the way they, they can play footy, they can absolutely challenge Port Adelaide. It'll be another close game. I think, you know, the odds don't really show that, but, you know, the, the way they've been performing over the last couple of weeks, for sure. Disappointing that, uh, you know, Tip and Woody's retired. He's one of my favourites. Yeah, uh, I used to love watching him play and, uh, you know, always having for a, let's just sneak a goal or two in with a couple of possessions. But, um, look, I... To be honest, at home, I think Port Adelaide will end up being too strong. Essendon will be gallant, but I, I, I just reckon Port Adelaide. But they're a little bit short. Take them at the line. Port Adelaide will win. Spide, uh, that is all thanks to Palmerbet. That is round number 11 action in the AFL this weekend. Going to be an absolute cracking weekend. But we don't give a stuff about that. Okay? No, the boys at Palmerbet, they not. shudder. They shudder when you go with the big super-duper oh. Spider Everett uh, multi, mate. What do you got for us this week, buddy? Well... I've, I've jumped on your bandwagon. I've gone off the $1 and $2 bets. I'm loading up on this one. Now, have a listen. This is one of my favourites of all time. Doesn't matter about who wins and loses because I reckon a few of the odds are at different stages. You know, we've yep. spoken about Collingwood, Carlton, Richmond, Sydney, Port Adelaide, Essendon. For me, multiple goal kickers to kick two plus goals. If you go to the AFL stats, you get Rewalt to kick two, Cameron, Charlie Cameron to kick two, Hawkins, Norton, and Max King. Yep. So all, all massive chances. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then to have 25 touches or more, Clayton Oliver, he'll do it. Lockie yep. Neal will do it. Bailey Smith will do it. Josh Kelly at GWS will do it. Gee, and really? Bra uh, Brad Crouch from the Saints will do it. 
Right, so that's five you? gold kickers, five twenty-five plus. You'll get just <laughs> over eight bucks, and I am on it. That is great. So eight bucks for that? That's that's under. I can't believe it's only eight bucks. But you know, see, if you well, Rewalt's going to kick a couple. Charlie a little, Cameron will kick a like, little. They're all gold push. kickers. There'll be a price push there, mate, from the boys at Palmer Bet too, which will just boost it up just a little fraction. But eight bucks, mate. I like your thinking. So five twenty-five plus, five to kick two plus, mate. That is spider ever. It's super duper. Uh, Absolutely multi for the week. Hey, yeah, you're coming get in on it. Vic. You're coming in to Vic too, Spide. Yeah, weekend. looking forward to it. Can't wait. We're going to go and watch a little bit of school footy in the APS, and then we're going to go and watch Melbourne versus. Uh, Frio, and then we're going out to watch the Sandringham Dragons versus the Dandenong Stingrays and oh, see the uh, captain's run for the Saints, and then we'll go and watch Saints and North Melbourne on Sunday. Does it get life. any better than that for a weekend? And, mate, the St Kilda faithful, mate, they just roll out the red carpet for one of their absolute legends of the game in spite of oh, Everett. I, I and you're bringing what, the young so. fella too, and I don't want to put the malls on him, but young Boston, mate, uh, listen, a little name to watch in the future, mate. He's got a bit of ability, they tell me, and uh, you're bringing the young fella down, which is fantastic to see. And his first time ever to the MCG. Oh, mate, look out. He's never been to the MCG. We're going to walk across the bridge, walk in. You know, we're going to be a little bit de- – probably dressed a little bit different to the Melbourne faithful with their jackets and everything like that. I don't dress like that, but I will be there. I can't wait. It's going to be huge. Thongs and shorts, mate. Thongs and shorts for you. Hey, Absolutely. Spider, gamble responsibly, of course. All thanks to Palmer Bet. This has been this week's edition of In the Pocket. Great to talk to you, mate, and have a great weekend with the young fella, mate, and uh, good luck and go Saints and go Tigers. Absolutely, and don't forget the big multi, five and five. Get on it. <laughs>